Hey, Jake here. Hope you're doing good. Um, I saw this recent Instagram post from an artist I follow who had been off Instagram for a bit. And if you want to read his post, I'll post it up here and you can pause the video and read it. But the TLDR is that he was off the platform to recalibrate and to get back to making art for himself and not for likes or for attention. And what he does is he, he points to social media as being this unhealthy place for young artists because there's this focus on likes as a measure of self-worth. Um, there's problems with comparisons, comparing yourself to others. And there's also this false sense of community. There's like a version of community, but doesn't really feel like community. To top it all off, he doesn't mention this, but this is something I've been thinking about, is that creators have been getting absolutely demolished by the algorithm. Now, it used to be in the golden days of Instagram uh, that the, with the following that I had, uh, a single post could get 20,000, 30,000 likes. And now today, I'm lucky to get 5,000 likes, and that's if I share like fan art, something that's really relevant to like the zeitgeist right now. There's just so much content um, that's hard for uh, for people to cut through the noise. And this is something that's like even made, worth, made worse with uh, AI right now. I don't want to get into AI, but there's tons of AI imagery that's like clouding all the real artist, you know, human imagery. Um, so this algorithm obsession kind of leads to this unhealthy place of trying to beat the algorithm. Now I talk to a lot of creators uh, these days, both seasoned creators and new creators. And a lot of people just want to give up. They're saying there's no way to beat the algorithm. There's no way to grow a following anymore. Um, unless I become like this content machine, just churning out content after content, right? And so this video is like, let's come up with an answer to this. I have some ideas, um, but really what I think is the, the, like the main gist of it is we need to stop focusing on content and focus more on connection. Okay, so going back to the artist I opened with, Jake Morrison, I applaud him for taking a life moment to step back and come at his work from a healthier place. And it reminds me of this quote by this Canadian, um, uh, this Canadian composer uh, or classical pianist. His name's Glenn Gold. And what he said was, "The purpose of art is not the release of a momentary ejection of adrenaline, but rather the gradual, lifelong construction of a state of wonder." and serenity. Art that's made for moments of adrenaline is really what got us into this algorithmic mess. Art that's made gradually, that constructs a state of wonder, a state of serenity, is art made for connecting with people. So this video today is it's like your reminder for the day to stop making art for the algorithm and instead make art for people. Because like art, like true art connects with people and stories, real stories, are what connect with people. You're an artist who makes art, you're a storyteller who tells stories, not a content creator. Now, writing on this topic of content creation, I found this quote from this hammer of a of an opinion piece on the New York Times. This was written by Jason Bailey, and speaking of content creation, he says, content creator neatly accomplishes two things at once. It lets people who make garbage think they're making art, and it tells people who make art that they are making garbage. <laughs> so, I love that. So how do you stop being a content creator and start being a connection creator? My answer to this, this is the whole point and focus of this video is make something physical. Okay, so the artists that I most resonate, uh, most resonate with, they're not Instagram artists, though they might be posting on Instagram. Um, they're not the, those artists that are like, super witty on Twitter or the, the YouTube like clickbait artist. No, the artists that I love are the ones who I have interacted with outside of social media. I've either met them in person or I've spent hours holding something that they've made in my hands. And these are the artists that I end up resonating the most with. So it's sort of on us as creators the, to figure out how we can get ourselves into a place where we can provide something tangible to our audience or our potential audience. 
once you do that, you unlock this solid following for your work. Uh, and not only that, like you become happier uh, creating it. You become a more fulfilled creative person. Now for me, that's making books. I love making books. I have been making books since I was a kid. Every year I try to put out a new book, whether it's through a, a traditional publisher or I publish it myself. For you, it might be prints. It might be stuffed animals. It might be blankets. It might be putting out original art. But the point is you want to be someone, you want to create something that someone can hold in their hands. And here's why. Tangible connection. Physical products offer a tangible connection that goes beyond uh, digital interactions, which like it allows for this like sensory immersive experience that you don't get from just like touching glass. Okay. So something tangible, visibility. Okay. Your, your book, if you make a book, your book, your book serves as like a visible reminder of you on someone's shelf or on someone's coffee table. And what that does is it fosters like a deeper connection with the people who have the book that you've made. Um, you know, it's better than posting a drawing online and just getting a like or a comment on it. It's getting an email after you've put out a book and someone has just said, I finished reading your book and I want more. I want to know when your next book is going to come out. Or I like this one part in it and it, it lead me to ask this question. What did it mean for this character? Or what is it, you know, what was going through your mind? That is real connection. That's not just uh, content that's being posted for likes. Okay. And speaking of real connection, that's like, I think the biggest thing with having a physical uh, something that you've made, again, for me, books, is that emotional connection. Like physical books can evoke an emotional response and like an attachment. Um, you know, you, you love the, the, the collection that you've made of books. Like for me, it, I have Hellboy right there. I love Hellboy. I love the creator, Mike Mignola. I love going through these books, reading them, flipping through the pages, smelling the ink. And what that has done is created a stronger bond with the work that Mike Mignola has made, but also the creator himself. It made me want to go meet him in person. It made me want to have a, like a, a stronger connection with him. Okay. So um, going back to that original artist I was talking about, Jake Morrison, why do I feel connected to his work? He hardly ever posts online, but he made something tangible that I look at often. And just to seal that connection, we met in person a couple of times at conventions. So it's like this, this thing, I see his book, I feel connected to him, I want to meet him, I want to have this physical connection as well. So if you're wondering how to start making your own book, but you're completely lost and you need a, like a step-by-step -step plan tailored to your specific needs as a creator, and you're wanting like actionable first steps, uh, what I've done is made a free six video mini course. Um, I, I work together with my teaching partners, Will Terry and Lee White. Um, and we put it on a website called selfpublishingpro.com. That's the sponsor of this video. And if you go there and you sign up, what you're gonna do is get an email uh, sending you to a series of private YouTube videos that we've posted. And these videos explain the path of self-publishing. So we're going to show the five phases of self-publishing. We're going to show you how to get people to buy your book and and like teach you how to get those first um, like genuine followers who want something that you've made. Okay, uh, we're going to give you something actionable that you can work on right away to do that. And then we're also breaking down one of our own successful projects to kind of show you how we were able to make that. If that's something that you are wanting to do, if that's like uh, an area of your career that you're wanting to get into, check this out. You know, if it resonates with you, go ahead and, and sign up for the, the nine week course. We have like an open enrollment that's going to be like a week long at the end of the month. You know, if you miss that enrollment date, if you see this video too late, you can get on the email list and you'll be notified the next time we launch it. I just really want you to be able to unlock your potential as a creator and your ability to connect with an audience. I've been able to do it myself and like I want to help other people do that as well. All right, that's it. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you quit being a content creator and start creating connection. Now I want you to turn off this video and go make something.